if numbers are to be the uh, measurement or criteria of truth, then we who believe in the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist, we are lost. We lost if numbers are to be the criteria, as I've said, or the measurement. But the Bible gives us the inspiration and encouragement today, friends. It's not the numbers. It is the Spirit of God, the truth that must be upheld. So are we fighting a lost cause here? 20 million Seventh-day Adventist Trinitarians versus 7K estimated non-Trinitarians that are fighting in inside and outside the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Our Father in heaven, bless our time together, Father. I pray for your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts powerfully. I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today and tomorrow in selected theaters nationwide, the United States of America, the film about Ellen G. White and the pioneers, the hopeful will debut. This is a film that waters down the true history of the Seventh-day Adventist. Just like the watered-down version of the Great Controversy, the Great Hope, Resources of the church were spent for this movie. And I do hope instead of watching and going to the theater today, I would like the faithful Seventh-day Adventists who are listening today to instead read the website about the true history of the uh, Seventh-day Adventist pioneers. I like to recommend truthseeker.church website. In this website, you can find the true history of the church of the Seventh-day Adventist. And there you can find um, articles about the pioneers, non-Trinitarian stand, and also um, the uh, biblical scriptures talks about uh, Ellen G. White and her stand as a former Trinitarian and answers the question, did she return to her Trinitarian Methodist roots? And I would say absolutely no. She rejected it, never returned to it. The evangelism is the Holy Spirit, the Trinity third person. What does he mean when you say three persons in the heavenly trio? So many important, significant resources here. And the issues, the changes, and the resources, books, and everything. So, dearly beloved, I would like us to ponder for a moment, why did Ellen G. White mention in her statement just before she passed away that she trembled for the, for the Seventh-day Adventist Church? She did, in fact... Uh, mention that she is um, warning God's people before before she died. Why did she said that she trembled for for her people during the uh, Alpha of apostasy by Dr. John Harvey Kellogg? Uh huh. Some of you may. Uh, conjecture, and some of you may not um, may not truly understand the context of what Sister White had warned us about. She trembled for her people because she saw that her people would follow the sophistry of leading men in the church and lead them to depart from the fundamental principles on the seventh day Adventist. She trembled for God's people because she believes that 
her people will follow false teachers in the Seventh day Adventist Church. And they did. Warning upon warning and statement upon statement were ignored by the General Conference and by those who professed to be followers of truth. She did, in fact, warn us that before she died, our religion would be changed. And that is a clear fact. Alan G. White warned his people before she died. At some point, Alan G. White mentioned that the voice of the Jell Conference after 1903 is no longer the voice of God. In fact, Statements upon statements had been published and issued, yet the church did not heed her warning. So today, no matter what statements Jesus, uh, Ellen G. White would, would be uh, presented, I think the Seventh-day Adventist Church is set in their Trinitarian ways. They call it now Godhead. But if they go to their official website, it's still Trinity, a unity of three co-eternal persons, a blasphemy of the Father and Son personality, a blasphemy of the Father and the Son, and exaltation of another God, which is not to be worshipped in the Bible. So... Is it a lost cause for us? 22 million Seventh-day Adventists versus 7,000 who did not worship or who, do not, who did not bow down to Baal or the Trinity doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Well, the few are defeated in numbers by the many, but the few are in the truth. The few uphold the truth of the word of God, that there is only one God, our Father, who gave us his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and their Holy Spirit. So Ellen G. White trembled for his people. What does this statement mean uh, today? Why did she tremble uh, for her people? Sister White is fearful that the foundations of our faith will be changed. And, and millions, 22 millions more or less, do not believe this warning from Ellen G. White. You can read all the uh, statements of Ellen G. White on the internet. There's a lot of them, and I'm I'm very careful also. And I have read them. She trembled because the Seventh-day Adventist Church would follow men who are drinking from the wine of Babylon, the Trinity Doctrine, or the Triangular Godhead. So this is a big issue which the Seventh-day Adventist today is making it a non-issue. But this is a big issue because this is about God. This is about the integrity of the scriptures, which in 1980 was changed by fallen man in the Yale Conference, which is not the voice of God. I believe that Sister White trembled for her people because they do not search the truth. They have no time to search the truth. They do not love the truth. They do not want to be convicted by the truth because it is only being upholded by few, affirmed by very, very few people. And it is the most unpopular hated teaching, not only during the time of Ellen G. White, but in our time today, they did not accept the Trinity of Rome. So Ellen G. White trembled for her people who professed to follow Jesus as the Son of God, yet they believed in Trinity. 
Why would they follow Jesus, the Son of God, and believe the Trinity at the same time? It does not make sense because they do not understand the truth about Jesus as the Son of God, who He is, when did He become the Son of God, nor Trinity. What is Trinity? What is the, the philosophical dogma of Trinity? They don't understand. And that's why Ellen G. White trembled in my assessment, in my readings, in my interpretation, in my understanding. You have to read her statements in order for you to understand His, uh, her, I mean, her pronouncements. It's all over the internet. We are in the age of information. We have no excuse today. The documents are open. Uh, there are websites who share the truth, even though it is being taken down by the mainstream Seventh-day Adventist churches. So 22 million Seventh-day Adventists versus the 7,000 who do not worship or do not bow down Trinity or Baal worship in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Is this a lost cause? I would say no. David defeated Goliath. Eight souls were saved in the ark. Three persons escaped through the mountains during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. 12 minus 1 understood what Jesus' message was. 500 who saw Jesus ascended were very few. Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down. All the disciples perished by the sword. Or by poison. John, the last apostle, the beloved John, was burned alive via oil, boiled alive, but survived and received the truth of the revelation of Christ, the Son of God. And shared it to us today. It's still alive. The Word of God is not dead. The Word of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, is not dead. The Word of God. The flesh is Christ. The word of God is truth. The spirit of Christ is truth. Is still with us today. So I am reflecting and I'm pondering. 4,000 plus of videos will not cut it probably. Millions of words of Ellen G. White will not probably cut it. Websites that promote truth will not probably cut it. What will cut it right now is the actual Spirit of God that will convict and guide the few who will accept the truth. What could God our Father do if man and woman would not want to listen? If man and woman inside the Seventh day of His church had set their ways and their minds not to believe the pioneers. They can lie about the pioneers. They can say things about the pioneers, against the pioneers. They can use, abuse, misuse the pioneers, but the truth will not be departed, will not depart from the pioneers. They have published their statements and we can read it and accept it or reject it. So dearly beloved, Ellen G. White trembled for the Seventh-day Adventist, and I do too. Our worst enemies, our persecutors, are Trinitarian Seventh-day Adventists, staunch Trinitarians, because the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a non-Trinitarian movement. The majority Trinitarians today will be our greatest persecutors and enemies. And there are ignorant, blinded, and there are people who don't really care about the issue about the God in the Seventh Heavens Church. But I would like to prophesy, and I hope I'm wrong, but I felt this is going to be the truth. Our greatest persecutors, those who will wish our death, are the Trinitarian Seventh day Adventists. They hated the, the message so much, they are ready to kill, thinking they are serving their trinity God as truth. Be warned, our cause is not lost. We tremble, yes, we do tremble. 
but we continue to be courageous to speak the truth. Though the champions are very few, the majority, the Goliaths of the Seventh-day Adventist Church Trinitarians are against us. So help us, God, and through his Son, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, is our comfort, and his Spirit, Christ's Spirit, in us, his Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved, don't be discouraged. Be empowered. The few will triumph. Many are called, but few will triumph. The few will reach the heavenly shore. May God bless you. And his son be